and they're also alive. Oh, yes. We are live and we will wait again a couple of minutes for everyone to join. Yeah, I guess that will be the best thing to do. Yeah, people are coming in now. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the fourth session. And we will wait again, like uh, before, for everyone to arrive. So I guess we will start in two minutes. And then we will have the fourth and last session for today. In the meantime, I can share our speaker of today. So. Yes. Two more minutes and then we can start. So for everyone who is joining right now, we are going to wait a couple more minutes uh, so that uh, everyone has the chance to see the presentation from the start. And uh, so one more minute. Almost. If someone has already a question, I will uh, look at it. So, uh, thank you very much. We will start right now. Um, welcome back to the third day of the JMark User Conference. Uh, and our fourth and last session of the day. My name is Anbu, and I'm here to present our next speaker and my colleague here at Houses Frankfurt, Mr. Ahmed Shoev. Um, so Ahmed Shoev will uh, discuss the efficiency map generation because considering hysteresis and eddy current loss distributions. Mr. Uh, Shoev is uh, working at Houses since April 2019 and is our, uh, is, is responsible for J, uh, JMark software and uh, He's in charge of customer trainings, webinars, and he's the first guy in, in the Dach area when you have a question regarding JMark. Please welcome Mr. Ahmed Chouet. Mr. Ahmed, I will give you the screen. Yeah, one moment. Share. I hope my screen is clear now. Yes, we can see it. Perfect. Um, thank you again for the introduction. Um, thank you everybody for joining my presentation today. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about efficiency map generation considering hysteresis losses and at the current loss distributions uh, using the play model and 1D FEA. This is um, a continuation of or an sort of an application of what, the J what JMAG now offers when it comes to uh, J uh, efficiency map generation. So, sorry. Yeah, so my agenda today, I'm gonna to be giving a small motivation. I'm gonna be describing the motor. Then I have a so-called Bayes model. I will um, show the efficiency map generated with it. Then I will be explaining the equivalent circuit method. I will be comparing loss models on two operating points. Then I'm gonna be uh, generating an efficiency map using the equivalent circuit method. And then finally, I'm gonna give a short summary of my work. So for motivation, 
So drive motors have, a have achieved efficiencies of up to 95%. And now it's become more paramount to calculate, to, to consider not just uh, to, ca to accurately calculate the losses, but also to take into account control circuits and motor control. Uh, however, the problem is that control circuit simulations are very time consuming. And the cha we, ha we are now facing a challenge of finding an evaluation model that can calculate not just uh, efficiency maps fast, but also accurately. So going quickly through the motor. The motor to be evaluated is a three-phase PMSM. It's 48, uh, four, eight poles, 48 slots. The, out, uh, the rated output power is around 80 kilowatts. The DC voltage is six, uh, 600 volts with a maximum phase current of 250 amperes and a carrier frequency of six kilohertz. So now I have my so-called base model and I'm gonna be showing its efficiency map. So for my base model, I'm using a sine wave drive. I'm using conventional methods uh, based on the Steinmetz equation to calculate iron losses. Copper losses and uh, copper losses in the coil and magnet losses are not considered in this uh, in this method. The reason why I'm um, why I'm do generating this efficiency map is to have a quick evaluation and understand motor behavior over the operating range. This efficiency map does not take any time to generate; it takes around a few minutes, but it gives me an initial indication of how everything works. So now I'm going to be going into the equivalent circuit method. So as I said, as I previously, sta previously stated, control circuit simulation is very tricky, and high carrier frequencies require very time, sm uh, very small time steps to capture all the harmonic effects. In order to, do, uh, in addition, um, one needs to calculate several electrical cycles because with, because of the voltage supply we have an initial transient state in the beginning of the simulation. This can cause very large simulation times. The idea now is to use something called an, an equivalent circuit method, which uses a high fidelity spatial harmonic model for the initial transient period. How does this work is through this circuit here. What I want to highlight is that I do not just have an, my FEA motor circuit here, I also have my, uh, my high fidelity uh, motor here. And what does the circuit do is that here I have a normal PID control. And in this, PI, in this PID control, uh, this PID control feeds into either the RT model or the FEA model. This, uh, this is done, so in the beginning, what happens is that in the, the RT model is being used for the initial transient period. Since the IT model has uh, inductances and torques saved, we get a quick calculation in the beginning. And then once steady state has been reached, this is determined by a certain uh, tolerance. Um, I move on to, the, to my FEA model. So here are some result examples. As you can see here, there's this line. This line sh shows um, the time, sort of the time saving effect when using this high fidelity model at the initial period. So there is no transient effect in the beginning of the simulation. So circuit, uh, so circuit current, as you can see here, considers the inverter harmonics, also the torque, but it's all in steady state. So now I'm gonna be comparing loss models on two operating points. So as you can see here, uh, I have two operating points, one at 2000 RPM, one at 9000 RPM. Both have 50, both have 50 uh, Newton meter output. To reiterate, I have a base model, which uses a sine wave drive. It uses conventional method based on the Simon's equation for iron loss evaluation. I have AC copper, lo AC copper losses and uh, magnet losses are not taken into account. For my high fidelity model, I'm using the equivalent circuit method. I'm using a PWM drive. I have my, I'm using the play model and one delamination method to calculate uh, for iron loss evaluation. AC copper losses and magnet losses are taken into account. Here I show my results. So as you can see here for the hysteresis losses for the first operating point, there's no change. 
there's an increase in eddy current losses. And as expected, copper losses for the mag uh, copper losses and magnet losses are increased because I am now considering them in the second uh, calculation. For the second operating point, there's a slight increase in the in the hysteresis losses, and eddy and as normal trend, eddy current losses, copper losses, and magnet losses are increased. So why does this happen? So first, I consider hysteresis losses. So the play model is, a, is, able, is, is able to accurately reconstruct hysteresis loops. The figures below show the hysteresis curves at, two, uh, at the tooth edge on the two operating points. The one, on the, the one on the left is for operating point one, the one on the right is for operating point two. The reason why I don't see an increase in hysteresis losses for the first operating point is as you can see, yes, there are a lot of points here that are coming out, but those are not closed loops. And unfortunately for the solver, this detects that there's no increase in loss. But as for the second operating point, you can see that there are closed loops and it considers that, that as an extra loss. For eddy current losses, I see an increase in eddy current losses due to the car carrier frequency harmonics. However, uh, uh, sorry, increase in eddy current losses due to the carrier frequency harmonics, which are not in line with the slot harmonics. So the for the first operating point, I have my slot harmonics at around 1,500 hertz. I can see here my uh, my uh, the initial component of the carrier frequency at 6,000 hertz, and then the second harmonic comp component of the carrier frequency at 12 at 12,000 hertz. As for the second operating point, my slot harmonics at around are, are at around 7,200 hertz. This, um, this sort of does a blended effect with the carrier harmonics. So since they're cl quite close to one another and the effect is not, uh, is not really pronounced as in the first operating point. Lastly, I want to, che to check the AC losses. So the increase in AC losses at high speed is due to the leak uh, eddy currents generated by the leakage flux. And I wanted to check which uh, which harmonic component is, uh, is responsible for it. I do a quick FFT to see uh, the, leakage uh, the leakage flux, where I find that the leakage flux is mainly caused by the fundamental, uh, fundamental wave and not the carrier, uh, carrier frequency. Moving on. And then after comparing both, both loss models and seeing that I can get a better understanding of the physics, of losses uh, with the play model and the 1D FEA. I generate an efficiency map uh, considering the, considering the, uh, using these uh, new, uh, new loss methods and also considering the, uh, the equivalent circuit model so that I can consider also PWM losses. And this is how my efficiency map looks like. Now to give a quick summary of my work. So the equivalent circuit method saves a significant amount of time uh, when it comes to calculating control circuits uh, and efficiency maps. Control circuit simulation is necessary in capturing all the, uh, har uh, the harmonic losses. The play model and 1D FAA uh, method give a better insight into the physics of the losses. Uh, such as minor loops and skin effects than using conventional methods based on the Steinmetz equation. For future work, I will be considering the press effect. I will be verifying this with a 3D model and I would like to implement this workflow on a client motor and compare it with measurements. My presentation is quite small and quick, but thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for uh, listening. If you have any questions, please free to ask. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. Uh, we will start with the question part right now. Um, so far, we don't have any questions, but we'll wait a couple of minutes. Uh, so we give everyone a chance to ask their question. Um, we have a problem with the audio, as I think in the beginning. Um, so, uh, Mr. Urin, you can, okay, you cannot hear me, but uh, I will just say that you can rewatch the session, then we will upload it. 
in case anybody has any problems or needs further clarification, everybody has my email so they can just directly contact me and I can give them, we can have like a short meeting to, to, uh, to explain everything if needed. It looks like we don't have any questions. But uh, I would suggest we will wait two more minutes. Maybe something comes up. In the meantime, I will share the schedule for tomorrow. Oh, um, did you receive a question on it? Because I don't see one so far. Yeah, I think there is. Oh, yeah. Um, Sorry, I miss uh, MA Hayes misses. Did you run accuracy efficiency map? Yes, exactly. This is an uh, both are like the uh, the efficiency maps that I'm showing are um, accuracy mode. I think also we have an um, efficiency map session, uh, a poster session uh, 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 regarding efficiency maps where people can have an interaction, interactive discussion uh, on how to generate efficiency maps, how to, um, let's say, um, how to consider all the effects when, when, uh, when uh, generating efficiency maps. We have an interactive session on Friday uh, with my colleague Eve at 12 p.m. Uh, people can log on and uh, interact with that. Uh, second question is how many points did you run and how long does it take? Um, so I run around 300 points and it takes for the equivalent circuit method two days. So it's not a fat, it's not a slow, uh, it's not a, a very, like within a few minutes simulation, but you can uh, get results within a reasonable amount of time. Okay, uh, next question is is there any info about the vector play model in JMA document? Sorry. I repeat it again. Uh, is there any info about the vector play model in JMA docu? Um, I have some information I can send it. Uh, like I have some documentation that I can send. Uh, just please send me an email and I can, uh, I can, uh, I can, uh, I can answer that. I have a lot of doc PDFs that, that can explain everything. Okay. It is uh, from, uh, Van Jan, uh, we, I can con uh, connect with him on Vova and give him your email address. Exactly, just send me an email and I can uh, give a detailed explanation of everything. Okay, uh, next question from Jorge Roja. Did the compares comparisons made indicate a percentage difference in the nominal efficiency of the motor for the cases studied? What, with, but, uh, what values, sorry. I think I need to indicate percentage difference. Um, so I'm so the differences uh, in percentage is around uh, two to three percent. Of course, because you're using different methods, you're always going to have a difference. That's why I didn't show the difference between both efficiency maps. Um, but what I wanted to highlight here is that using the play model, I get a better understanding with, of the physics and of the losses and not just uh, just say, okay, this is more accurate, but just I, I have a better understanding of what hysteresis loops are created within the simulation and get a better understanding of the eddy current losses. And from then I can uh, continue working. But of course, when you're using different methods, you're always going to get a difference in, in, in efficiency percentage. But uh, in, let's say, in theory, um, 
the plane using an efficiency map with the equivalent circuit method with like my high fidelity model this should give you very accurate results and then you can just directly compare it with measurements afterwards all right uh, we have another question from if does the generator mode is also available in the accuracy mode yes you can do a generator mode as well um, I was more interested in uh, motor mode just to have like a base simulation, but you can also do generator mode. Okay, that was, I think, the final questions. Um, so if you have any more questions, use the last chance to ask. Uh, if the question is quite complicated. You can also send it afterwards via mail to Ahmed. And, and as I said on Friday, we have a discussion about efficiency maps. Uh, please feel free to join and we, uh, and we can discuss more in detail. Okay, we have another question. Is the high fidelity model circuit available as a template? Uh, yes, we have some circuit templates uh, that we can share. Uh, you just have to create the RT model yourself. All right. So I think that it is. Thank you, Ahmed, for answering all the questions. Thank you. And I will share the schedule for tomorrow. So this was today the last session and we will continue tomorrow very early at 10 a.m. with a spine-based preform shape optimization. Then at 11 a.m. we have PCM implementation for modeling the solar-based grid bed converter. At 12 p.m. we have simulations for the design of supercapacitor-based energy storage in a large scientific facility. And then comes the break. And at 3 p.m. we have the last session of tomorrow experimental platform for the study of impact of rooftop PV system integration on distribution grid. All right, so, so tomorrow, please join in an hour earlier than today. And yes, hope to see you there too. And thank you, Ahmed, again. And thank you all the we viewers for being so loyal and joining in the afternoon. And I hope I will see you tomorrow too. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye.